We can buzz 113. <laughs> Only the third time I'm the youngest guy at this table. You're younger than me? Yeah. That's really? A Fucking bit. brilliant way to start this shit out. You're <laughs> really going to get on my good side. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh. I'm 51. You're the, 51. Are you the oldest guy for 51? One fifty. I was reading an interview with you uh, about love letters that you were hurting so many people's feelings. Maybe in the beginning, <laughs> that the show took a turn where it became more of you said this weird scroll through your Swiss cheese brain. I think what you're referencing is a comment I made in regards to season six or five, six. Okay, maybe. And whatever. I went through a divorce in season six. I went through a major back surgery in mm -hmm. season six. I was on narcotics half of season six uh -huh. uh, for all of the filming of season six. So my head space wasn't exactly like, yeah, skateboarding. Uh -huh. uh, you know, it was more like, fuck the world, fuck you, fuck. You know, and I've apologized, uh, you know, I've tried to apologize <laughs> publicly to Rodney or whatever. The point that I was trying to yeah. make was that nobody in skateboarding gets to sit there and make claims about themselves. If you make claims about, it's it's like, oh, I'm a roast beef air guy. Like, if you make claims about yourself, you're basically a fucking douchebag. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> and, and that's how it's always been. And this 2016 version that we all do, where we all run around with this new agey, this secret-y, isn't it great to be here bullshit. Yeah, It's fucking, you were so blessed. Blessings, brother. <laughs> oh, fuck you, man. It's, I agree with you. It's fucking skateboarding for Christ's sakes. And there is a yin and a yang to it. Yeah. As great as it is, it's also, there's there's this very fucking down and dirty, fuck you y, anti authoritarianism, whatever bullshit, mm -hmm. negativity. And mm -hmm. you know, that's, that, that is skateboarders at their core. I, I, really, what I wanted to say was the fucking Bones Brigade documentary sucked. Yeah. Stacy Peralta should be <laughs> fucking ashamed of himself. Lance Mountain is fucking godhead, okay? And the uh, fact that Tony, Cab, any of them, nobody could go on camera and say that, mm -hmm. of what a fucking phenomenal skateboarder he is, uh -huh. was, was a travesty and a tragedy. The only reason that stupid wannabe fake documentary got made, uh -huh. I mean, shit, fucking, what's a spinal tap? is more real than the Bones Brigade autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> for fucking real. Yeah, like I watched that thing and I felt- Directed by I felt by for Lance, <laughs> like, I, like, like to me- The only I reason that thing got made was so that Lance could try to bring George and fucking Stacy back together and fucking heal the rift between them. Mm -hmm. And boy, didn't that kind of work, at least financially. Right. I, like, I, I don't, you know, I, he gets bummed on me for this <laughs> shit, so. Yeah, but but like, you're very outspoken. Like, do you feel a certain <laughs> obligation to like come out and say the truth? Like, it seems like you have this thing inside you where you have to it's, come it, look, out it's and not, tell it like it is and be real. And a lot of people can't do that. Now. It's my it's my truth. It's my reality. It does mm -hmm. not make it the truth. Like, we should probably <laughs> put that at the bottom. Like, start there. Like, it's just it's just my truth. But I think people appreciate it about you. But I think the other thing that's interesting is. Everyone wants people to keep it real until it's about them. Until somebody keeps it real. About you. Well, every, everybody's <laughs> about, you know what I mean? No, like, everybody's about keeping it real when somebody else is saying it. Everyone, that's can, what get, I'm everyone can get behind somebody, yeah. especially Jeff, and yeah. and he, he's kind of like, has to, he's like. Yeah, the, you become the like, the whipping boy for it, it by it's, being it, that guy. It's, it is definitely a precarious situation I put myself in, because if I fucking go too far left or too far right, and I insult a bunch of people, which, uh, you know, there was a little bit of bad, I mean, whatever, people are, you know. The protest everybody thing loves, last year. Everybody fucking loves Rodney Mullen. So great, everybody loves Rodney Mullen. But that doesn't mean Rodney gets to sit around and fucking act like he cured cancer. Yeah. Uh, you know, like it's skateboarding for Christ's sakes. Like, and so we tried to do something funny and make a comment on the travesty that was the Powell documentary. And, um, and, the, and again, these are just my opinions. The, sh the show is b based upon a bunch of ideas that I, that Buddy and Rick and I come up with, and we'll say, "Hey, we're going to do this this thing about the freestyle conspiracy, which doesn't even exist." Yeah. Vert skaters run skate, you know, all these yeah. dis distributions, and it's it's Jeff not Kendall and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking Rob Mertz and Jeff Kendall. They're all fighting Steve Douglas, Bod Boyle. Yeah. You're all kooks. <laughs> 
right? Bert Mertz is cool, he still skates. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, I'm a very polarizing figure in 2016. It's, 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 a, it's a dangerous line I straddle, because like whatever, if I talk too much shit, one day I'm gonna fucking stick my foot in my mouth, out my ass, and I'm gonna be shown the door. They're gonna be like, oh fuck, nobody's gonna wanna fucking give me money, because Grosso went too far, and I'll have insulted somebody, and there'll be no coming back from it. It's been six years, it's been a huge learning curve. For a while we thought that it was going to be a history channel, uh, you know, type show where we'd be like, Doug Pineapple Saladino made up the board slide. That's kind of what I get from it, though. And it's kind of started. It's sprinkled it, it, it in kinda, there. It kind of started out as that, but then you quickly learn being skateboarders that there is no way to tell the history of our skateboarding. And that's and again, you're back on the curb arguing with your fucking friend in, in ninth grade whether his name is David Andrecht or it's David Andretti. Right. Or whether or not Scott Foss is the best skateboarder in the world or is Steve Caballero. And I, these are the these are the arguments that Eric Nash and I had at 12 years old, and I'm 47. I'm going to be 48 in a few weeks, and I'm still having the same fucking arguments. <laughs> I just get paid for it now, and I do it on camera. Uh, you know, like so. There is no way to get to the bottom of who invented the frontside invert. Look, uh, like I said, there's a there's a hippie in 1975 doing a frontside invert. There's also Greg Weaver did him in 75, also, but it's all on banks and it was just. A, but then you said the Slappies one, you're like, oh, fucking John yeah, that's invented them. And then he's like, nah, Lance did. Like, that, quickly. No, like, a, but that's the rad part about skateboarding. He doesn't want, like, fuck that. He did it over there. I saw him. Ex from exactly. It's but like, who really how, can you, well, how can you take, uh, you know, credit, how are you take credit, credit for, for yourself? Fucking, there there you go. Go. Freestyle conspiracy. We just won't do it. No, but then <laughs> there's so much of that <laughs> nowadays yeah, with, 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 with the yeah, older guys. There's so much of these guys that are just like, they skated forever and they had like a little career and then they went and it died down and they're making a rebirth with all these parks around. They want credit for their things. And that's kind of like that's the, 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 thing. People the want crowd credit. you're dealing with a little bit. It all goes back to like the Dogtown documentary. Like everybody wanted to have that feeling of being praised on camera for these people, Make right? Make a documentary about me. But when they start making their own documentary and praising themselves, it no longer is valid. Right. You know, it's like it's, it's PR. It's got to be. Yeah. It's got to be real. You know? So you can't take credit. I can't take credit for inventing a fucking curb grind. The only thing I can take credit for is naming it a slappy. But you know, I I came. It came to almost physical alter altercations with the guys from San Jose in Northern California. <laughs> Corey O'Brien and his Straight brothers up, no. saying, we fucking, that we fucking invented the slappy at the Scurbs in San Jose. Where are you guys like, at? Where fucking was, good. This where, was like, how does that happen? It was how does that through, meeting happen? I don't, you know, it was mainly through word of mouth in, in the beginning, <laughs> but, or you just heard that. Dude, Cor you know, Corey and Grax are fucking pissed. They were know? too. And they were. I was like, fuck guys, you can have it. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. But they like walked up to you and conf like There was never a walk up. Oh, no, but but, but you, what you had was you, you <laughs> had They were just pissed because bar up. Obviously some fucking guy that was with glasses gets credit in a magazine in print. <laughs> glasses. <laughs> Why does it have to be glasses? Glasses is the problem. If you didn't have glasses. <laughs> No, the glasses up. weren't always cool in 81. <laughs> Back man, in the I'm day, you yeah. Were. You were wearing glasses in 81, you were a fucking kook. <laughs> you weren't okay, a question. And I, was, and I was the kook sidekick. <laughs> right, so imagine he and I, right? We were fucked. Blockhead and the kook, yeah. right? You had no fucking chance. Running around, we had no chance. And then these guys, they just caught wind of it. I got, <laughs> so everyone invented his slappies. And I'm just like, fuck, dude, that's a lot of fucking pressure. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, I don't need to. Because then you always have to <laughs> see, here, Again, here it goes back to the clicks. Here it goes back to your set, your crew, whatever you want to call yourselves. Uh, you know, you're sitting there with your friends in your local neighborhood, and you're fucking super proud of, of, of what you guys do. This is my skateboard, and this is my thing. This is my fucking escape. Yeah. You know, and then all of a sudden, you see some other dude getting the credit for something that you think that you fucking was your thing. So yeah, people got upset or whatever. Then we went and we met him and hung out with them all. We all ended up being friends. Yeah. Then there was like, well, fuck you, you guys fucking think you're cool. And it's like, no, we don't think we're cool. He wears glasses and I'm a fucking kook. Like, we're kooks. Have you ever worn contacts? I tried it for, uh... I tried it for a couple weeks and I just I was never comfortable with putting them in. Yeah. And then uh, <clears throat> I did go a number of years without glasses just because I got tired of wearing them. But I've been wearing glasses since I was in second grade. Seems like they come up a lot in uh, conversation. My glasses? <laughs> yeah. Well, just I was here, like on videos I watch. Like every, well, I mean, everybody's you're got, the guy with glasses. Everybody's got 
a beard and glasses, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. But nobody wore glasses back then. There was seriously maybe... Now it's a thing. <laughs> I had to wear glasses. I learned how to skate in glasses. I'm cross-eyed. I, my, both my eyes see different than the next. It enters my brain differently. I've the best thing I could do in life, being a fucking four-eyed geek, is mm -hmm. to keep my head down. And the best thing to keep your head down is looking at your feet, and that's with a skateboard under your feet. And that's how I learned how to, to ride a skateboard. The farther I'm looking out, the harder it is to see. So I'm, I'm better off close up. So once I started skateboarding, it became the only comfortable thing for me to be able to do. And I loved it right from the get-go. As soon as I stepped on a skateboard, all of a sudden I, I, I could do whatever I wanted to do. For being a guy that's a self-proclaimed nerd and outcast and stuff, you've had a really exceptional run at, at, at however you want to call it, talent, farming, picking, or having a, a vision of these guys early. The, the squad of Black Label at the beginning has had Jason Dill, Gino Iannucci. My favorite. Fuck Dill. <laughs> <laughs> Gino Iannucci. Love you, Dill. Cardiel. Like all these guys who are like iconic style gods now. Yeah. Like the street, like everybody, lo anything out of them we love. We love. Yeah. But you ha saw them when they were 15, 14, 15, 16, whatever. Yeah, it was. I mean. Maybe I, even earlier, I don't know. It's just all from myself. I mean, I am a little older obviously than those guys, but when I started my, my company, you know, I was, fuck, 24 years old or something like that, so I was a kid myself, right. pretty much. And then, like I said, I've, I've never been good at, like, snatching riders or borrowing too much shit. It's always just kind of came from within. So if I'm out there skating with the guys I know or whatever, you, you run into people. And also, Gino Inucci happened to be, he actually sent us a sponsor me tape. Right. Which a uh, fucking great sponsor me tape. <laughs> Fantastic sponsor. I mean, he's got a tape. chain wallet, he's got cuff jeans, and he's riding curbs. Of course, I was going to sponsor him. Yeah. We did not know what it, he would become at all. I just thought he looked cool and he was from New York and he was, seemed like a cool kid. Dill, on the other hand, was local. A local. And, and Mongo pushing local. Mongo, power pusher. Oh my God, you wouldn't <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's but, changed. Nothing's but, fucking changed. But you can see it. He's all energy and he's awesome. So he's great. He was great. great. No, he was yeah. great. He was a great little kid. And uh, No, he wasn't. He was horrible and we wanted to kill him. <laughs> that motherfucker would come into Black Label. I'd supposed to be on the phone. It's like, hey, want to buy some fucking Cardio candy slicks? And it, 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 you got to make them like world boards. We're world in. Industries, world industries, why can't we be more like world is shut the fuck up, go skate, get out of here. Has he kind of been like an older brother to you a lot? It seems yeah, like there's he is some my older brother. looking out for you, nurturing. He's my younger brother. Yeah. See, yeah. I, uh, we've, I've known him since he was 11 years old. Uh -huh. that, that qualifies us as brothers. And it's not very often that here's somebody growing up. Thinks you're cool. <laughs> you guys are like 35 years deep together, 40, 40 years deep, fuck, I'm 35. As friends. Yeah. Yeah. Over 30 years. 38 30. years. Yeah, 37, to 37 years. Close to 40 years. So you're yeah. brothers. Yeah. yeah. So. We've been through, we've been through fucking, we've been through deaths, we've been through fucking marriages, divorces, um, fucking fist fights, <laughs> drug addiction. You guys fought each other Homelessness. Before? We've never actually fought, fought. I've been hit. I've had, to had. Forcefully, I had to forcefully <laughs> remove him. Yes, I've been forcefully removed and hit as the most tweet. And I was. But most, I can also tell you, I'm and glad I had you never hit me back. How did that happen? Like, what's the scenario? We had Mike Carol Rosenberg in here tell a fight story that was. I was, incredible. I was, I was being, I was being drunk and, and disorderly and just disrespectful and basically being an asshole at a really, really inopportune time when it when it was imperative that I be on my best behavior. And I was asked repeatedly to be on my best behavior. I said I would be, and then I turned around and I did the complete opposite. How do you forcefully remove a grosso from uh, someone? Well, you gotta when, be angry first. He was angry, all right. And it, that's when your powers come out, your fucking He-Man powers, yeah. which sometimes you don't even know you have. Yeah. When you're, <laughs> like when a mom lifts a car off their job. Yeah, yeah, so you you gotta gra that. he's grabbed by the neck and you stuff him into his... Glasses come off like clock stuff, Stuffed me in my car stuffed and told me to get the fuck out of here. I know you shouldn't be driving at all, not even close to it. Fucking stick the key in the ignition, turn it on, put, kicked his foot under the pedal and told him to fucking split. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt bad also as soon as he yeah, left. I wasn't I sure. There's no cell phones back there. There's no way of telling what would happen. <laughs> fuck you, man. He made you cry? Of course. 
We've, yeah, I've cried a lot behind I, this one. Yeah. Well, he, you, on social media, you, you tend to quote a lot of like Elliot Smith and, and Morrissey uh, lyrics on when you post stuff, whether it's tongue in cheek or whatever it is. But it seems like there's like an emo little guy inside he's there the, somewhere. He's the original <laughs> you know I mean? emo yeah. skateboarder. I don't, can't think of another one I like one that you guys him. aren't embarrassed to admit what, the what? sensitivity. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. That's, that's the thing. Is we, like that. We're not. We're not here to be cool. We never have been. So yeah. Why start? Yeah. Skateboarders aren't cool. Yeah. First of all, I guess it, the, the tides shifted with EMB. Like after yeah, that's EMB a different. Came, cult, that's a different level of. It's like we're we're cool now. It's like no, we're not. We never were. But now all of a sudden, you know. I wanted to get into that though, because the freaks what, episode, the freaks and geeks episode that you guys did, of your show. This is something I think. Do you think there's not enough weirdos in skateboarding nowadays? Or is it just that there's so many people in skateboarding that it's the same amount of weirdos, but there's just more? I think, like, I think skateboarding needs more. Like GSDs, and, and you know, I worked with them for eight years. I was like blown away by that guy. Like, he's legit where are the, where are I, the I think weirdos? The, problem, the weirdos are here. The problem is there's too many people. There's too many documentaries about being cool. There's too much shit like that. The <laughs> people are starting to believe they actually are cool. And so the guys that actually believe they're cool are now starting to fucking press down on the weirdos and, and the keep them The weirdos are down. getting gentrified out they of are. skateboarding. They really are. Yeah. And, and, and all skaters are weirdos, except for the guys that find an ego, a false ego yeah. to fucking push people around with. And that's, what hap that's what's happened to a lot of the weirdos. The weirdos are here, and they should be able to fucking stand themselves up. A lot of them are hiding back. Well, we got a fucking room full of them right now. There's just, right. there's just all more. All fucking weirdos. Not me, I'm like normal. But fucking, know, I, I, dude, have a beer with fear. There's too many of us, there's too many of us, there's too many. They're, I mean, they're there, yeah. except for sometimes those, Richie those, Jackson. those people, like say the Neil Blenders and yeah. whatever, the GSTs, whatever, they're not the ones that are outspoken. They're not the ones that are saying, look at me, pat me on the back, where's my brownie button? They're so not doing weird. that. Yeah. That actually comes. You get recognized naturally when the talent yeah, you is there. Do. And real. Yeah. Exactly. But like I said, now there's so many people involved in skating. This is no disrespect at all, but back in the old days, it was legitimately weird skateboarders and people. Now there's so many people that a lot of them, a lot of the personalities that are involved in skateboarding today, I don't think would be skating back in the old days. Correct. Because their personality wouldn't have allowed them to skate. They just wouldn't have been yeah. that type of person. There's so many types of personalities now. That's what, we, that's what creates so many There's kids who, divides, are like, who would be know? like little league kids who are exactly. now skateboarders. Yeah, exactly. You know? It doesn't and mean there's it's too not much money good. at stake for some people to be weird Look, too. Look, there are right? people yeah. that skateboard. Mm -hmm. and, there, and there are some phenomenal people that skateboard out there. They are not skateboarders. And then there are the skateboarders. And the two are completely different. Skateboarding has fucking caused me as, as much fucking fun and as wonderful, great as it's given me, it's given me a fucking ass load of pain too. Uh, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it hurts to walk, it hurts to fucking get out of bed, it hurts. I mean, shit, I was asked to walk away from it. I can't walk, I cannot imagine what the fuck I'm gonna do after I can't skateboard anymore. I'm trying everything in my power right now to get back to it. Right. And if it's taken from, I'm gonna get all emotional. If it's taken from me and I can't do it anymore, I'm talking about just roll down the street to buy a fucking a pack of cigarettes, I don't smoke anymore, but to go to the liquor store for a fucking drink or something, to, right. to get some ice cream for the kid, whatever. If I can't do it anymore, just the act of rolling, fuck that ramp out there, just rolling. Right. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I, I don't know how to function in life without my little wooden toy. Right. And, um, and that fucking utterly horrifies me. It scares the shit out of me. I like, I, I like, in my perfect scenario, it's like the day I can't skateboard anymore is the day I die. Right. Dude, it's so bad some days I can't skate. Like, I have to be like, fuck, it's too natted out. There's no skate today. <laughs> There's no skating at all. It's too natted out. That is amazing. <laughs> Dude, I <know. laughs>